Hello YouTube, I haven't made a video in a really long time, so I'm back, yay. Awkward. I got a new camera, woo! I had a camera, uh, it was a flip cam. It was the white one that only records one hour of video. And, um, the guy who came to work on our house, uh, knocked it over and broke it. And so, I found out about it because he took a video of himself breaking it. Somehow. And then I saw that and was like, well, shoot, you broke my camera. So I sent him an email and he was like, okay, I'll get you a new one. Which is like, awesome, because I didn't have to bargain with him at all. And then he got me a new one. And I just got it today, and it's an upgrade from my old one, which is awesome. So I've got the Ultra HD Flip. It's black and beautiful and thin, and it records two hours of video, and um, it's really cool. I really love it. So what have I been up to in the last couple of months that I haven't been making videos? I've been trying to get my grades up because when I was in the hospital, uh, I missed an entire week and I was already like down on my grades before that and I got my grades up um, I had an okay report card at the end of the year and now I'm at summer Woo! and uh, what I'm doing for summer is I am interning with April Charmaine um, at Solvita Dance you guys should check it out um, shameless promotion I dyed my hair obviously didn't fade into this. I dyed my hair and I'm giving it a break for a while. Um, but it looks like crap today, so that's why I'm wearing a hat. I'm writing my novel. Um, I'm not sure how many of the people who watch my videos know that I'm a writer. Um, I go to Denver School of the Arts for creative writing, and I have to write a novel for my creative writing class, which is really, really scary. Um, I'm about 11 pages into my novel. It's about a girl named Samantha, Sam um, for short, and she and her friends are doing drugs in her basement one day. Um, and the whole thing takes place in the 70s. And Sam uh, trips and she hits her head and she passes out. And so her friend Kayla, who is an African-American um, young teenager uh, takes her to the hospital and then do a blood test and when Sam wakes up Kayla and her are so freaked out that they're gonna get caught um, doing that they're gonna find out that they were doing drugs um, because of the blood test and so they escape from the hospital they steal Kayla's mom's car and Sam's mom's credit card and they go on a wild journey from New York to San Francisco and if you don't know your geography very well that's literally from one end the east coast to the west coast <laughs> um, which is obviously all across the United States and along the way they do all this illegal stuff and I'm not gonna ruin the ending for you because uh, I don't know what the ending is yet. It's kind of like On the Road by Jack Kerouac, but not really, um, because, because it just isn't that type of- I got my inspiration from, um, John Green, uh, for the title of the book, which is the- which is called, um, Manic Pixie Dream Girl. Uh, Manic Pixie Dream Girls, um, which he he frequently writes about, and I was like, oh, I gotta use that. I want to write about a Manic Pixie Dream Girl, and so I decided to write that. Um, and it it was originally called I'm in Love with a Manic Pixie Dream Girl, but that didn't end up happening. I mean, it might it might go back to that. I might I might end up titling that, but it doesn't really matter because I mean titles change for writers like every 10 seconds so it's not like it really matters. So I've been writing that. It's really scary. I'll put a link below so you can read some of it. Let me know 
how you think it is. Um, it'll be an early draft of what you read. I, I've made some edits from what is in the doobly-doo um, in my pants, but um, <laughs> making so many John Green references here. Uh, but um, hopefully you guys like it. If you don't, let me know. I, I might just, uh, I don't even know if this is even going to be the idea for my novel. Um, I may end up not writing this book, abandoning it and having my first couple abandoned books. And I might write something from someone in a mental hospital. I don't know. Um, very few, few of you know that I was in a mental hospital earlier this year. Um, not because I'm crazy. I am, but not because I'm crazy. Not like that crazy. Um, but because I had some issues with depression and I needed to just figure them out um, all in one one go. And I did. And I'm better now. Um, if you follow me on face Facebook, you'll know that I came to an epiphany this morning at sunrise that, um, only those who have been through the darkness can see um, the light in life. Uh, you should friend me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, thing will be in my pants. And oh, friend me on Nerd Fighters too. I'm such a nerd fighter. I can't wait to get John's book and I realize that John's book does not come out until May of, like, May 2012, or at least that's what Amazon is saying. Uh, John, if you're watching this, can you please confirm that? I really don't want to wait that long to get your book, so I'm really excited to read it. And when you read some of it on your live stream, I was like, oh my god, I must read this book, it's gonna be amazing! And, yeah, so... Really want to read The Fall in Our Stars. Really want it to come out. Um, I am pre-ordering it. I haven't yet. Because my mom hasn't yet given me a credit card so I can buy it. Um, but I will. And then I'll get a signed copy and I'll be super, super happy. So I found myself very recently um, upset for for several reasons, um, and they're all fan fan reasons, like they're all stupid reasons, really. But I found myself being depressed over, like, I'm not gonna give you a number because I'll just ramble on and add numbers to the list. But I've been depressed because of the Glee project. <laughs> uh, I'm such a Gleek, um, and the reason is because I've watched one episode of that show. Maybe two. I think I've watched two episodes. No, maybe like one and a half. I don't know, but I've seen it and was watching it for the first time and I was like, oh, this is so cool. And then came the audition show of like showing the auditions for everything and I was so heartbroken. I was like, oh my God, why did I not know of this? I wanted to audition so bad. Badly. I think I knew of it before, but I just didn't give it much thought because I figured, oh, well, it's not going to come to, you know, I don't, it's not going to come to Denver and I don't have enough time to do this. And then watching it, I was like, I had time. <laughs> um, so yeah, it makes me slightly depressed because, you know, the first episode they meet Darren Chris, which is like, ah, and which is not fair because I doubt any of those people are star kids and they have not been a fan of Darren Chris as long as me and my friends have and meeting him would be amazing. Oh, speaking of Darren Chris, did every did anyone watching this see the Dublin kiss? The claim Dublin kiss? Oh my god! Ah! Uh so if you don't if you haven't seen the video, I'll put the link in the doobly doo. Um, there was a claim kiss live in Dublin. Ah! Uh, I'm such a gleek. Oh my god. Ah, uh, it's actually kind of, it's actually kind of depressing how much of a gleek I am. <sighs> anyway, but uh, Darren, Chris, 
uh, and Chris Colfer did a um, clean skit, which, you know, most, a lot of people have seen that clean skit. Um, there was a, an added thing of a poem, which was really adorable and funny, and Chris Colfer is hilarious. Um, and then there was the normal skit, like, it's the perfect time to propose! And, God, people watching this who haven't seen that skit are, like, really confused and wanting to shoot me in the face right now. So they did the normal skit, um, and, you know, Kurt, or Gl Chris as Kurt does his little, like, f you know, back, it's not a flip, but like his little back roll, it's like, Jack wake up, you know, and then Blaine, Dar Darren, Chris is like, get up, get up, come here, and Chris has this look on his face, like, wh what? What, what are you doing? And he gets up and he's still smiling. He's trying to be like Kurt. And then Darren goes, um, you had me at Emmy. And he kisses him. And <laughs> Chris is like, they kiss him. And he's like, Chris is like, what? That wasn't scripted. And he like fall, like he, he takes a few steps back, like really stumbling. And then he like falls and rolls. I think the falling and the roll that he did was definitely, you know, he didn't, he did that on purpose to fall and make it all like, oh, I'm funny. Um, cause it was funny and adorable, but you could see on his face, like what did you just do? Um, and I mean, at least I hope that wasn't scripted. Like, I really hope it wasn't scripted because I really would like to see Darren and Chris get together. And I know, I know Darren says he's straight, I know, but I feel like maybe he's one of those guys who's like straight and then he comes into a late, you know, revelation that he's actually bi or something. Um, and I really hope so because I think it would be so adorable if they got together. Um, First, for, for the first thing is because you know, Chris and or uh, Kurt and Blaine are together and they're adorable together, and it'd be great to see more kisses on the show. Ryan Murphy, please more clean kisses. Kiss, see what I did there. Huh. It'd be cool for Chris to um, to just have a boyfriend. You know, like it'd be nice for him to get with somebody who he cared about, and it'd be nice for Darren to be see half of me wants Darren to be gay or bi because I think it'd be adorable and because I mean he's he's just so adorable and and it'd be cool for him to like be like oh yeah you know I, I, I'm bi whatever and just show people like whatever doesn't really matter um, which he already does obviously but I don't know. I love gay men. Um, but it'd be cool to see Darren be with Chris. It'd be cool, you know, make my little fantasy come true. I'm a gleek. I'm such a gleek. So the other half of me thinks, wants him to be straight because, you know, every girl in the world has a crush on Darren. And I have a big crush on Darren. And I have a big crush on Chris too, but he's gay. So even if there were like the minute chance of meeting Chris Colfer and having a spark with him, it would never happen because he's gay. Um, and I love Chris Colfer. I think he's adorable. I think he's an amazing actor. He's one of the people that I look up to most. But he's gay. So there's no way you know, any fangirl is ever going to get with him. But with Darren, if he's straight, um, there's, there's still that, like, 0.1% chance that a fan would be able to get with him. You know, there's these two conflicting sides of me that are like, he must be gay because him and Chris these are my two sides. They're, they reside in my hands. They must be g <laughs> He must be gay because then Chris and him can get together and it'll be adorable. No, it's gotta be straight because then you can get together. There's no way you'd ever get together with him and he wouldn't date a fan anyway. What makes you so sure? What? <sighs> straight. Gay. Straight. Gay. Uh, I sent him a little thing on Twitter and was like, 
<laughs> was that? This is me on Twitter, except for I don't tweet from my phone. So I don't know what... <laughs> um, hey, Darren, you know, are... Was that... You know, was the... Or, uh, his last tweet was like, a year ago I wouldn't have thought that I'd be closing a 40... 40... Uh, 40 state show. And I was like, yeah, you wouldn't be, you didn't think you'd be cr kissing Chris Colfer either. Was it, like, you know, and I was like, is it, was it planned, was it scripted, or was it just a little gift for the fans, or a little gift for Chris? And, um, and then I was like, I love you! Um, and I was gonna say a whole bunch more about Star Kid and everything, but there's only 140 characters, and literally I use exactly 140 characters to make that post, which is kind of pathetic. And so I asked him, and then I also asked Chris Colfer, because his last thing was like, it ended, you know, there were, there were tears, there were blah, blah, and there were some kisses. And then I was like, <laughs> was it scripted? You know, um, and asked him the same thing, and then I was like, love you! Um, I feel like they're getting a lot, <laughs> like, I looked on the replies while they're tweets, and they're not getting any, like, serious questions, like, was it scripted, was it... And I really hope I get a response back because I know all the reporters are going to be asking that and they're going to be really annoyed and it'd be nice if they were to just be like, you know what, this is the truth. And I don't care what the truth is, I just want to know, was it scripted, was it not? So that is my homework for you, to find out if the Dublin Clane kiss, the cliss, was scripted or not. Um, yes. So, I think I should go now because my camera is getting really hot, which kind of worries me. And, yeah. Mwah! I love you all so much. And I missed you. And I'm really a dork right now, aren't I? Bleh. Goodbye. <laughs> I am so